Hello and welcome along to episode 18 of this Snooker 19 career, the other O'Sullivan with me, Daniel. As promised, we're back for the final of the Welsh Open. You know we're playing against the world number 6, John Higgins. We'll be showing you the conclusion from this match to see if we can wrap up our second ranking title of the year. In the meantime, if you don't know how we got to this final, then do go back and check out last week's episode where we played through the semi-final against Ronnie O'Sullivan. It certainly was a tense and dramatic game. But the winner of this one will get £70,000 which will propel us well up into the 30s in the world rankings. A defeat and we just go up a few positions but either way we'll break into the top 50. We've got a minimum of 30 grand earned already and that's a fantastic achievement as we continue to excel in this home nation series having won our first ranking final in the Scottish Open. But today we're getting back into the game against John Higgins and there's a lot of parallels with our first final. We did win the first frame of the match but as you can see as we get into it now it's all gone a bit wrong since then. We've probably gone a bit too attacking, we've taken on chances where we didn't need to take risks and John Higgins has sort of forced that upon us as he's been having real success with long pots so whenever we've played a half decent safety shot he's managed to get out of it and build a break. So we are going to take the approach we took against Mark Williams in the last final. At 3-1 down we're just going to take any chance we get so it could mean a fantastic and exciting comeback or it could mean we'll be out of this match in 4 minutes. We've got the break off so we'll do our usual for that the 40% classic which seems to work so well so let's go and get into the reds and hopefully it'll be a decent break off shot we always do the fairly defensive one just to try and leave the reds in the middle of the table we don't want any chances for John Higgins although he might fancy a thin cut here as we've nudged on the brown rather than getting behind it but John Higgins is playing a safety shot as the fans applaud my shot and that one looks pretty decent as well he's blocked the line to the red that's loose and he may have snookered us on all the reds there, bar the outside of the pack. So we're going to have to play a similar shot to the break off and let's hope it'll be a pretty good one. So we'll go for the same as we do for the break off shots. 40% power in a similar type of line. Plenty of forward spin on the ball. And we are just behind the yellow spot on the bulk line. So we will go for the full 40% on this occasion. We've overhit it drastically. It's opened up the reds. And if we don't get in behind the brown and green here, we're going to be in all sorts of trouble. I think we might have got away with it. But we have left the one open red. And I think he's going to try and take that on. There's one available on both sides, in fact. This is where John Higgins comes into his own. Although for the first time in this match he's missed one now so we are going to have a chance to get in amongst the reds if we've been lucky enough to be left one on so here's the moment of truth let's see if either of these reds go have we got enough of an angle on the bottom red we have so we are going to be able to start our break it's just whether we're going to be able to get on a color i think we're going to have to screw forward and just go for plenty of power even if it means going up for the bulk colors or getting up for the pink or blue we've come past the pink spot which is pretty handy and we've got a good angle on blue to the corner this should be the start of a decent break let's see if we can start to build it quickly the blue is going to be straight so we're going to put that one in and we we just want to hang around that blue spot really as there's plenty of reds that will go to the corner we just want to make sure we don't cover the spot so let's make sure we screw through a little bit and then we'll have a couple of options to the bottom corner pocket 59 percent power the blue spots freed up and we should be able to hold for blue or black off any of these reds on the side cushion so this is the one we're going to go for we could leave ourselves on pink to middle though if that one goes slightly wrong we're in trouble but we are going to take that risk anyway we've got to trust our judgment at this stage in our career the red goes in and i think we have come too far ironically we might not be able to get the angle on the pink we're just about all right so we'll put the pink in with just a little bit of power we don't want to overdo it too much we also want to try and screw back can we get into these reds we want to open up the pack as much as possible so we're going to go for a full 100 percent power the pink's going to go into the heart of the pocket and the reds have been split a little bit that's turned out to be a pretty good shot as long as we're on a red from this shot We've been fortunate, we've got a red on, it's right at the top of the pack and it'll open up two or three others as well. The pink has gone up to the brown spot now, so we're going to have to screw up for the blue each time, but that's not going to be too difficult, although we have underhit that one drastically. So with the wrong side of the blue by a long way, we may have to go for green and screw back down the table. That's a really poor shot, and maybe we've wasted a great opportunity. We're going to just put the green in, we're going to screw forward as quickly as possible, 60% should bring us back down past the blue. There's plenty Plenty of options once we get to there. We've underhit it slightly, but we've come past the blue spot. It's just whether we've got any reds on now. 
It's not been our lucky day. There isn't a red on at all. So we're going to have to go for something a bit drastic. We could play a safety, but with the reds as open as they are, that's not really going to be a possibility. So we're going to go for one of the most audacious plants you've ever seen, just to try and give ourselves an opportunity to continue this break. As if not, John Higgins is going to win it anyway. So I at least want to go down Troy. It's one of the worst plants you will ever see, but we almost get away with it to the top corner pocket. The red flies up the table and almost goes in. But John Higgins is amongst the reds now. And I think that could be the end of our dream. We put 17 on the board, but John Higgins, as he pots the first red, will then continue his long break. The red goes in, and he's got on the colour. We'll be back if we get another chance at the table, but I think it might just be confirmation of the trophy. Well, 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 John Higgins has put on a very quick fire 39, was looking completely confident, but then missed an easy red, just to give us half a chance here to stay in this final. You may wonder why I went for the plant in the last one, but this final has been like no other game I've played in this series. We've been putting decent safety shots together, getting tight to the cushions, and John Higgins has just been potting from everywhere, something we've not seen before, and hopefully it won't happen too frequently, as it stopped us being able to play our natural game. We've been left a red over the pocket, so we're going to pop that and hopefully we'll come up nicely for the black which we seem to have done quite well and we've now got five loose reds that we should be able to pot and then we'll only really have difficulty in the bulk colours. We've got the pink up there in between the green and brown and none of them are on their spot bar the yellow so we could have some difficulty at that stage but for now let's just enjoy the easy bit. We're going to try and screw through for this one. 30% should take us off the cushion and leave us on at least one red. We've got both pockets to play with and five different reds that are all covered by nothing. So we're in a beautiful position, and hopefully we can pop the first of these now. This red looks pretty comfortable, the second from the top, and we're just going to try and put it in the corner and screw up for the blue if possible. We might have to do it off one cushion due to the nature of the shot, so we're going to screw through and see if we can get up for blue. We've come off one cushion perfectly, and I couldn't have asked for much more out of that shot. We're just above the blue spot, and we've got a lovely angle. We should be able to get down for the three reds to the right of the black. Let's line the blue up then. We don't want to hit this one with too much power. We just want to make sure that we're in a good position. Anywhere around there would be great. So let's try and screw through 17%. We've overhit it very slightly. But the blue's in the pocket, which is the most important thing. And we should have an angle on at least two of these reds. I think the bottom one in the pack goes. I'm just going to see if it does. It does pass the other red, so that's a good shot for us. We might well take that one on. We can screw back again and get up for the blue. We're going to have to play that with a bit more power though. 16 64%. Let's make sure the red goes in. We've underhit it drastically, and it's another disastrous shot. The other red's cannoned and covered the yellow, and we've got a very thin cut on the black here, which has to be potted for us to have a chance. What a disastrous effort. We underhit it by 10%, and that's the consequences of doing so. So we're going to try a very thin cut on the black. We're not going to hit it too hard, and we're going to screw forward up the table. We can't worry about the position on the red. We've just got to make sure the black goes in. It does. It's a fantastic pot and we've got a mid-range red which is a pretty straight effort that's a fantastic shot and we got out of jail with that one the reds are pretty straight pot to the corner and we should be able to hold for the black as well Let's try and put it in then, see what sort of position we can get. Again, we've overhit it slightly, but we're just going to come off the cushion. We're back on the black and back on track. Hopefully, we can win this frame. Okay, we've lined up the black, and we're trying to get in the middle of the two reds, so we've got a choice. If we get a good enough angle on the red to the middle, we can think about going up for the pink, green, or brown, just so we can try and make it easier when we get to the colours. But I don't think we've come high enough to pop that one, so it is just going to be the other red to the corner. We can come up for the blue from that one, and then we'll be able to reassess after that shot. We don't want to hit it with too much power. 31% should do the trick. We've just overhit it slightly again, so we're a little bit high for the blue now. Maybe we will have to take on the yellow. Let's see what angles we've got then. I'm not sure which of the bulk colours we can actually pop from here. I think it is only the yellow. So let's see what our angle is on the blue. It's not as bad as first thought actually. So we might be able to come down the table. We don't want to screw forward quite as much. As it seems to be leading us towards the corner pocket. Or maybe we can come up and have the red to the same pocket. Let's see how we get on with this one. 46% power. Very slightly overhit again. We did pot the blue which is the most important thing. And we've got a lovely cannon on the red on the way back up. And now it's pretty much straight to the top corner pocket. We couldn't have asked for much more. What a fantastic bit of fortune that was.
Let's make sure we pot it then. We don't want to go too far. We just want to stay pretty much where we are for the blue. And then we can try and screw up for the yellow. Just leaving ourselves a nice angle. 25% power. The cue ball stays where the red was. And it just drops in off the jaws of the pocket. We made that one look harder than it was. We've now got to pot the blue comfortably. And leave ourselves a good angle on the yellow. We've just got to make sure we don't go too fine. As otherwise we'll be covered by the blue. But the blue drops in and we're on to the yellow well. This could be the chance to win the front. We're 20 points ahead, so we just need the yellow and green, and if we can get the angle on the green, we won't then need to worry about the awfully placed brown. So let's try and pot the yellow, we're going to screw forward, if we come a bit too far then so be it, it's better than not coming far enough. We're going to go for 39% power, we've overhit it very slightly, but it's worked out absolutely perfect, we're going to be winning this frame. We might well be having a two episode final, as we're going to be back in this match, something that was completely unexpected at the start. I'm not quite sure how we're going to get on this brown, we might just have to cannon into it, or maybe we can try and cannon the pink, and see if that gets us anywhere. The most important thing is that we don't snooker ourselves, that would be an absolute disaster. So we're going to make sure we get a contact with the pink, or at least get ourselves on the brown. I'm going to try and come in between the two colours, just so I know that I can hit the brown. 94% power, the green goes in, and we can make contact with the brown, which is all that matters at this stage. We're going to go for 50% power, just try and make contact with it. Don't really care where it ends up, as long as the cue ball doesn't go in. The brown's on one side of the table and the cue ball on the other, and we're 25 points ahead with just 22 remaining. John Higgins back at the table, just five points needed from a snooker, so he is obviously going to try and continue. He's got the brown behind the bulk spot, and now he's trying to get the cue ball in behind the black, but it's not worked out for him, and he's left a thin cut to the brown, so he may be able to pot it here and wrap up this frame in one go. We're just going to try to thin cut on the brown. Doesn't matter too much if it doesn't go in for us. We're going to try it at 25% power. We don't want to risk the cue ball going in. So the brown's going to be thin cut. It's just hung over the corner pocket. Not really worked out that time. But John Higgins will have to play another safety. John Higgins playing for the safety then. He's potted the brown in the end. And is the cue ball going to go in? It looks like it's just going to miss out. And he's got away with that one. I'm sure he didn't intend that. But now we can get a five-point snooker on the blue. He's really got to be careful though. Can he find the right shot? With just two balls left to snooker behind. He's got the cue ball up behind the pink spot. And he's tried to get the blue in behind it. But again, it's come a little too far. And we can make a connection with the outside of the ball. So same plan as last time for us, make sure we don't pot the cue ball, try and pot the object ball, so we're going for a very thin cut to the middle, making sure we connect with the blue, it's dropped into the middle pocket off the jaws, the cue ball nearly goes into the opposite middle pocket, but we just about survive, and we have won the frame, and we're certainly not going to finish this match today. What a fantastic comeback this could be, could we do it twice in a row from 3-1 down, we're just going to make a connection with a pink here, we could try the thin cut to the middle, but it seems to be suggested the cue ball's at risk, well, so I don't want to pop that and chance. cause any trouble. 34% power, the pink drops in, the cue ball stays at the top of the table, and we board it back to 3-2. Just the black to go. We'll try an adventurous double to the top corner pocket, but I'm not quite sure it's going to work out. It's just a bit of fun for the fans. We've ended up double kissing the cue ball. The black nearly goes into the bottom corner pocket, but we have won the frame, and that's the most important thing. A fantastic frame from us, even though we look like throwing it away at two or three points. We still trail 3-2 to John Higgins, and he remains the overwhelming favourite for the match, but it's good for us to have a lifeline going into the final two frames. But I'm afraid due to the extended nature of that frame and the fact that we're still in the game we are going to have to end this episode here we'll of course be back next friday with the rest of the final we'll play both of the final two frames should it go to a decider to see who wins the welsh open can we continue our brilliant home nations run or will john higgins stop the rot by winning the tournament in wales but if you did enjoy this episode and potentially the start of another fantastic final comeback, please do put a thumbs up on the video. I really do appreciate your support with the series. Let me know down in the comments if you think we can complete the job, or will John Higgins brush us off in the next episode? It'd be great if we could come back in the final from 3-1 down, just as we did against Mark Williams in the Scottish Open. We've got history for it, so it could happen again, but we're reliant on our opponent missing two easy shots. 
Subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from two long term stories as my channel name gives away. There's also three episodes a week from Cricket19, the official game of the Ashes. We're starting a brand new career mode series in that one tomorrow lunchtime. That'll be out at 12 o'clock. So if you are a fan of other sports games, please do go and check it out. There's also weekly content from this series every Friday at 4.30. But a massive thanks for watching this one and I hope you'll come and join me again next week as we conclude our final against John Higgins and try to wrap up the Welsh Open.